Okay, so in order to get a flawless, beautiful foundation on your skin, it's all the prep that we do before that, um, which I know that you are really good with looking after your skin, Beck. Um, what do you typically do in your skin regimes? Uh, generally, I will, in the morning, I'll use a um, face wash. Uh, I've got a serum that I alternate um, each day and then moisturizer and SPF. Amazing. Um, and I've recently been using this one. It is amazing. This is a game changer. It's go to, um, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It's uh, Zoe Foster Blake, which is a friend of yes. yours. And I've had the pleasure of meeting and doing her makeup. And I'm a true believer about her products. Um, when you're choosing a moisturizer um, to apply you know, prior to foundation, I think it's really difficult and it's a matter of trial and error and I'm just kind of just placing it in the key areas around here. But the thing that I love about this is it has SPF in it. It's a um, daily moisturiser that has zinc. So it's a little bit different to kind of your normal um, sunscreen which you would place on your prior to makeup. Um, however, when you're looking for a really good moisturizer before popping on makeup you need to identify whether you're oily whether you're dry um, all those kind of things and then picking out the correct one the reason why i've chosen this one for beck is it's actually got the spf 15 in it so that's the main thing you have to have something to protect you from the sun um, under your skincare um, if you're on more of the oily side this is perfect um, and Beck is a little bit more of the oily side, so it works as a really good um, moisturizer. So this is a great product. The other thing I wanted to talk through was some of the other products I use, and depending on your skin type, you can adjust um, accordingly. This product here, um, I have recently found is amazing. I'm actually gonna pop it just on top because of the SPF there. I would like to use this um, Amore Pacific. It's available at Mecca. What I love about this um, essential cream fluid is it works as a moisturizer and as a um, eye cream. So it's got kind of all those steps. I'm just going to massage it. If you just turn this way back into the T-zone and then out. It's very important for me before you are doing any kind of um, skin base to do, and I'm sure you're familiar with this too, Rebecca, is I always will give a really nice face massage my favorite part yeah and <laughs> another way um another tool that i am going to use and i like to do this say twice a week um if you're not going if you don't have time i've got two children a busy lifestyle i don't always have the time to sit there and kind of do a lot of skin treatments but what i do is a thursday night and sunday night a ritual where i use i'm just going to grab a product i want to stop it for a second sorry my rose quartz. Yeah. So as I was saying, I like to moisturize with the rose quartz. Um, the great thing with this is, and we'll just pop a little bit more, because this moisturizer is so light, you can, we're doing a dewy look today, so you feel free to uh, apply a little bit more in thin layers, but this works as lymphatic drainage, so it's amazing. Doesn't it feel nice mm -hmm. and cool? And what I often do is if I do do it on the weekend, I like to pop it in the fridge and it just gives you this cooling effect, but then it goes warm because the blood is all coming to the surface of the skin. And that's how you get that plump, beautiful, young, fresh skin. So it's giving everyone, oh, well, I think it gives you the best chance of being, your skin being in the best condition before you apply um, foundation on. So I love this and it's just a little trick. And I normally spend about 10 minutes Thursday nights, Sunday nights, just rolling it up and down my face. And it's just a nice natural way to get that blood flow because like anything, um, you know, your, your skin cells, they need to be stimulated and for, for, for your blood to reach to the, scent, to the surface of your face. So my top four moisturizers that I would say are on the market today would be my trusty go-to Dr. Spiller. I go on and on about this. Anyone, um, this is my favorite. Um, it is called Collagen Cream and it works kind of as a primer and a moisturizer. This um, 
is not really ideal for very, very oily skin. It will give you more and more moisture, which sometimes can make you look a little shiny under foundation. However, you're dry to combination. This is a game changer. I love this moisturizer. Um, the other two uh, that I love, um, if you're looking for a more natural product with not many nasties in it, you can't go past the go-to. Um, the great thing with this is it's got zinc. Australia, in terms of sunscreen, we have a lot of nasties that the rest of the world don't even have. Um, they won't let it go into the sunscreen, but we do have. So what I love about this moisturizer is it has zinc and it's all natural. That's the go-to. And it, like I said, it's great for um, an oilier skin, but if it's too dry, I would have to add a little bit more moisture. Um, another one which I recently got sent is Sicily Paris. I love, love their products. Um, the great one with this moisturizer is it is kind of for either dry or um, oily. It's, it's just a great go-to underneath your foundation. So that's another one. And my last one, which is my current little obsession is the Amore Pacific. Um, purely due to it eradicates your eye cream, it eradicates all those just in one step. So you're never going to say no to um, less work. <laughs> so they're my moisturizers. Um, but after we've done that and we've done a great moisturizer like this, it's time to get on to the actual makeup. So the next thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to apply a little bit of highlight. I'm going to use the Marc Jacobs. These are the dew drops, um, number 50. Um, I think when you're applying highlighter, it's quite difficult to understand which ways or when. What I like about this is we're doing it prior to the foundation. We're just going to buff it in to the um, peaks of the face. So I'm going to pop it onto the cheek like this and slowly buff it in with a blushing brush. So I'm Just always like so, so scared to put it over the top of my foundation. Well, I, think, I feel like it's so intense. Yeah, and I think if you look this way, the, um, yeah, the good way, the good thing when you do it like this is you're going to pop the foundation. You're just going to get a slight mm. seamless glow without it being, you know, quite stripy. And and this is if we're applying creams. If you're going to apply only powder and that's what you prefer, that's something at the very end. Okay. So we're just buffing this one like so into i mean you know the areas that you would typically put it on back where would you go um <laughs> here we go um top of the cheekbones um on the brow bone yep sometimes down like the an exam of the uh of the nose yeah and like i've said prior i mean when you are applying it to the nose just be really mindful that when we're highlighting we're bringing something forward and when we're contouring it's bringing something back so we're bringing forward the cheeks we're bringing forward a little bit of the um where your t-zone is but you don't want to necessarily do it right to the tip right to the some yeah. people do that they, they? do they have like a little shiny nose and because we're going you know, there's no rules because we're going into a bit of a dewy look today. I actually am going to apply a little bit to your, your um, forehead, but, and a little bit to this pop here. But if it's something that you don't want, you don't want any shine in that area, don't do it. But today I'm feeling this is what we're going to do. So we've done it just like that. Um, literally buffed in a little bit of a liquid drop into the face. And if you just turn that way, you can see it just kind of seamlessly goes into her um, moisturizer, but it is going to further be blended once we pop on the foundation. Um, the next thing I think is obviously choosing the right foundation for your skin and the right combination of what's gonna work, whether you're oily, whether you're dry. Now, because we're going for a dewy look today, I've opted for two foundations that I've mixed. Um, one being Makeup Forever, and another being the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. It's a little bit loved, so sorry about the top of this. <laughs> um, these two foundations for me are something I've been loving at the moment, and I've popped a little bit of those drops, the Marc Jacob, into the foundation. Um, remember when choosing colors, when choosing um, textures, it's all what suits you. Those two are great if you are a little bit oily but still wanting a dewy look because it does dry matte but has a seamless glow to it. Um, if you're 
a bit more on the oily, like very, very oily side, I would probably pop a primer in the um, center of the face. The best one that I love at the moment is the Benefit um, Pore Minimizer. So now I'm just gonna go straight in with a my trusty Real Techniques brush and um, pop the foundation onto the prepared skin. So now that you've we've popped on the foundation and we've kind of we've matched your neck, your arms, the area that's kind of the most bronzed, um, we have just our base but no concealing. So you know we need to fix and color correct any areas to get that beautiful seamless skin. Which right now, if Beck could see this, she'd probably be yelling at me. She's got a little bit of shadow here. So what you need to identify the shadow underneath your eyes. Is it more of a blue tinge? Is it more of a pink? Or is it just you're needing light reflecting? So it's understanding your own skin. In, in terms of Beck, she's got a little bit of blueness around there. So a, simply like a YSL Touche Lacar is not gonna do the job. It's just a light reflector. So what we need is a little bit of coverage and more of a warm tone to kind of color correct, more of an orangey warm base. I'm going to go with um, two concealers that I love. And when you're trying to get rid of those creases, it's really important that not to go right to the um, waterline because that's where it will be more um, product and it will crease. I tend to use a 217 for anyone that watches my videos or has had their makeup by me. Just a fluffy brush that kind of straight away tends to get rid of any of that color. So I, I haven't gone right up to the line. I think it's easier if you just press that in so that it doesn't get too creasy. Even those concealers that are crease-free, you can't assume that that's gonna work on you because everyone's physiology of their face is different. So it may not crease on one person, but it may on another. So I think the warmth of your um, fingers, the, the best one to use actually is this finger because it's the less power you have in the finger. So it's very light and you probably can even tell the difference when I just did it then. And then if you just turn this way, gonna buff it on this side. So when you do have the creases, you'd suggest using your finger, that's the best. Yep, bet. it does get rid of it. And if it's prepped correctly, like we've used the right, you know, the cream we used was a really rich eye cream as well, mm -hmm. then it is going to kind of counteract that as well. But you can't always, you know, it is just your face sometimes, yeah. so. I'm just going to pop another little bit of lightness there, the warmer colour, over the top. And just this section here and then we've finished concealing. But that those concealers are great. And don't forget too, in terms of your foundation, you can always go back in with the NARS if you want more coverage. But we've just done a seamless, just turn this way, still want your skin to look like skin. And that's what I think a lot of people forget. Mm. <laughs> you don't want someone to see your foundation before they see you. You want it still to look like your skin. Especially during the day, that's one thing that I, because I always ask for a beautiful sort of flawless, Glow. fresh, glowy finish on my skin. But sometimes that doesn't always doesn't happen. Always happen. <laughs> and it's during the day and you can see it all piled on. Especially for races yeah. and daytime events. What I'm going to do now, just because um, all the sil like everything that is in foundation, silicon, it's all separating, your skin's absorbing it. And I think a, a product that really helps with that is Tasha Luminous um, Skin Mist. So I'm just going to, I really love this. It's worth every cent. Pop that in, avoid the forehead. Um, just kind of do the center of the face and it helps with the absorption of the foundation. Um, now I'm just going to, as my final kind of that beautiful glow, grab the benefit. I use all creams, um, what's up? And once again, just from what we did earlier with the Marc Jacobs, these two work really well together in just getting that amazing glow. Because right now, um, Beck's face, it does look like skin, but it's a little bit flat. So we have to add that warmth and highlight. So I'm just doing it with, she knows the drill. <laughs> Do you have this one? You need to no, get this if I you don't. don't. Yeah, benefit what's up. So, 
And as you, you can see, the best one. This is probably the best. It's never not in my kit. So I would do this skin routine on myself and also on my clients. It's kind of my go-to. Um, and I'm just popping it. You know, you don't want your whole face glowing crazy, but you do want just this just does it so that it actually melts into the foundation and what we've done before. I'm always asking Jay what makeup products are you You are. You are Mecca's best customer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you love, 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 love. And I love that about you because mm -hmm. that's why I chose you today for skincare because I think you have, okay, amazing skin, but um, you always look really dewy and glowy. And I think you're the perfect person to do it on. Um, <clears throat> so although this looks amazing and it looks like Beck's skin, every girl out there is saying she needs a little bit of warmth, a bit of glow um, in terms of sun kiss warmth. Um, I've recently, I've always been a NARS Laguna lover, the um, obviously the original um, signature bronzer. I've recently converted to this. So anyone that doesn't use it, you really need to go and invest in it. Like I am obsessed with this. Um, give it a good shake before. It's very watery and it is a liquid bronzer. So um, the way I tend to use it is either put it on the back of your hand or in this case, I've got a... So you just apply it under the cheek and just buff it in. Start off quite light and then you can build it up. And then now we can just go for it. So now we're going to move on. We've got Beck with her bronzed, flawless, daytime, tonight look. Um, you can build upon this. What we're going to do is just do a quick two second um, base. This is the new NARS um, eyeshadow base with the liquid liner on top. So I'm all about it being a fast, quick, yet still looks amazing look. Um, we're going to pop this NARS, uh, which is, it's the tan, sorry, medium dark. We're going to pop that on the base of Beck's eyes, like so. So you're literally just going to... It's the perfect, um, the really NARS, like it's quite heavily NARS today, but I'm really loving this eye primer. It's great as an actual eyeshadow, I use it. And just blend it over the whole eye and just open Beck and look forward. Blend it right out. And there's also, if you can carry it, a darker one for people with either one or more a darker look or um, have darker skin. So I'm just going to pop that one because I think Beck can handle that. Mm -hmm. the eye so um, the outer corners it's really important not just to sorry follow the eye shape but actually elongate it further and then we'll pop on the liquid eyeliner now in terms of liquid eyeliner um, there's a lot out there the two that I love is either the Dior or the Stiller I don't think you can go wrong with either the Stiller has a really nice point felt tip point on it and I think it sits perfect when you are trying to get that amazing eyeliner which everyone struggles with. Do you do it yourself Beck or? No. My idea of eyeliner <laughs> is a little bit of, um, of a brown and then I just get a little um, cotton bud or brush. Oh, and brush. Just, um, Pop that out. <laughs> Well, what we're going to do today is explain how to apply this. 
So the Stilla black liquid all day, stays all day. Um, the best way to do it is I like to place. The best way is to hold the pen like this, place it down and just swipe across. Now in small motions to keep it kind of straight. You can add thickness, but make sure when you're lining it that way, that it's right on the lash line. Then when you get to as much as you can where you've swiped across and you're kind of stuck, the trick is to turn the pen around towards the eye and just place little movements, placing it. Close your eyes. Yep. And then connecting it all. And open. So we're nearly there. We're three quarters there. So um, also understand your eye shape. I'm actually going to bring Bex right in. So if you open but look down and just point and place, point and place. That's all you're doing. And open. And then that's the actual line done. And then what we're going to do is do the flick, but I'll just quickly do the other side and then we will explain how to do the flick. So now we're up to the tricky part of doing the flick. This is where a lot of people struggle. So I'm going to try to do the best I can to explain this. So you need to look forward and pretend obviously Beck that the camera is like a mirror. So you're looking into the mirror. You can see you've done your perfect liner, shade of your eyes. Now what we want to do is just keep looking forward. The key is to keep the eye open. So we, what, what kind of flick depends on what you're after too. I want to just elongate Beck's eyes and do them forward. So I'm going to try and follow the bottom, um, the bottom section of Beck's eye, not the top. So that's what people do is they follow it and keep drawing and then it goes and it gives you these downward eyes. We no, that. we don't want downward, it's all about lifting. So imagine I'm grabbing your eye and almost doing that. That's what we wanna do. So what I suggest for me and the easiest way I find it, once again, hold the liner like so, outways, and just follow like a almost like a triangle. Follow the bottom and just draw a line like that. And with that section, it's as you can see, it's continuing the eye that way. So then, once you've done that, you want to connect the whole liner. So look down, back and simply connect it. It's seriously that easy. You just, and then it's almost like a triangle on the side of the eye. So if you look forward, that's a thin one. If you want to go thicker, all you do is place it again and draw while the eyes open. And it connects it. And there's your flick. <laughs> and I'll do the, the, obviously it is quite imperative that you try and match the flicks of both sides, but those things can be adjusted. And so just looking forward into the mirror, that's the best way of doing it. That's pretty much just placing rather than actually freehand drawing. I think that's where people go wrong. So that's our finished look. Now all I'm adding is a little bit of the Tom Ford creamy bronzer just to the cheeks. And you could really go with this look anything. We could add a lip, you could add no lip, but it really is for every day an amazing um, skin and simple eye look. You're in a rush. <laughs>